Yale. Ready. Navy. Ready. Dartmouth. Ready. It's the national championship. And boy, this will be an exciting Off, they look clean. Had a good start. The Rowing Center program and the project itself just means an ex an expansion of of the existing pie, um, where all programs. Uh, can coexist and uh, strengthen. At Cornell, the coaches promote this, the administration promotes this, the concept of we're one team here at Cornell, we're one program, and having this training space will allow us to, um, to actually, you know, be one program. The, you know, the, the whole rowing center project, I think, is, is there's so many things going on that it encompasses that I don't really think there's, there's one simple answer, so it's a long-winded answer. Um, everything from NCAA compliance, i.e. getting the women's locker room to be large enough to comply with the men's and giving them a fair shot in terms of recruiting women to come in so it doesn't look like, oh, by the way, there's a women's program here, but instead we are proud of our women's program. We were the first Ivy to have a women's program, not just in 19, I think it was 75, but also back in there's pictures of 1901 and 1890s, uh, I believe there's a picture or two of women rowing on BB Lake. So, you know, women's rowing here isn't just the, the sort of quick last minute flash that everybody wants to give it credit for. There is a longer history. Upstairs in Collier will be all training space and that's incredibly important for not only for having the, the all of the ergs and all of the athletes able to train in one space, but with the weight room facilities, it will allow us to stay in one place uh, and get our, our erg work and then our, um, our lifting done at the same time. The weight room and training room, uh, having it all in one location is fantastic. One thing that I'm finding, and certainly found with the lightweights, and I think that I'm already finding with the heavyweights is, if we can't recruit it, then we have to build it. And in order to build it, and I'm talking muscle now, and it's called developing, uh, you know, bring boys in and making them into men far faster. In an effort to get us to where these top end schools are, we need to train harder, we need to train earlier, and we need to develop kids far better than what we used to do. So, Allowing them to get have it be down here, we can come in at 6.40 so we save more water time, put the boats away properly, walk upstairs while they're still warm, and there's the lift waiting for them to go. There's the coach saying, okay, today we're going to work on this part of our body or we're going to do this, that kind of flexibility, this kind of motion, and it can get done. We have the room. On top of that, we'll have room, I think the plans show for 48 ergs or 50 ergs, but those, that's a spacious uh, lounging affair as far as I'm concerned. We could probably fit 100 ergs in that space easily. It just gives us the room to do these things. It allows us to be far more efficient in what we're doing. Well, with women's rowing now being an NCAA sport, it's, it's the 12th year of its NCAA status, there's, there is a lot more um, focus on, on winning and making making that jump to the NCAA championships. The women's the women's program right now, I think all women's programs have a huge um, challenge which is recruiting. We we in order to be fast we need to recruit top talent and then once we get the top talent we need to be able to train them effectively. And it's incredibly competitive uh, to to recruit top talent. And I think the Boathouse project will will allow our, uh, will enhance our recruiting efforts. Locker room facilities are vitally important, um, not only for preparing to row, but also uh, having some parity across three programs. The locker rooms, um, you know, locker rooms, I had a big fight with the architects for a number of times, and a number of people on 
actually the administration for a while, locker rooms are locker rooms, as they said, and they didn't want to have big, spacious locker rooms. And I was adamantly against it. And my reason for being against it is we are a cold school. It, it tends to snow here. There's a number of times we come in with ice on the oars and all. And to me, having one spot in this whole messy uh, environment when it's like that, that's warm, that you can stretch in, that's big enough that you can be comfortable in, is important. Lunch storage space uh, can be used uh, to manage our equipment uh, off-season and then also during the season we can use it as uh, a place to store trailers before we head out to Florida and uh, having our launch, launches stored in the summer out of the, out of the sun rays, um, engines, uh, all that stuff off season is, is very, very crucial. Another big aspect of this, this that a lot of people don't seem to understand is how big the training comes in, in to, to effect now. I'm not just talking space for ergs, which is huge and the new facility would certainly allow us way more use in terms of using it as a training facility, but also the storage of more boats. Uh, we're no longer just in the eight anymore. We're also in the pairs, the straight fours, the cox fours, and we barely have enough room for that right now. There's our boats are on top of boats on top of boats. So the small boats, you know, uh, well, that they become a larger aspect of how you train for the eight now. A lot more selection, a lot more boat feel, the sensitivity to the boat. The the new entryway, which will will expand on the existing entry and, and lobby space of Collier, will allow allow the program to exhibit the rich history. Uh, a new entranceway, a new journey into what's next for Cornell Crew. Um, but then also, again, these, these uh, just fantastic traditions, photos, when a young man walks into Collier for the first time, he can look into the eyes of uh, the past varsity. The, the new lobby is, is, I don't want to call it anything wasteful, because I don't think it's wasteful, but it's open enough that we can display some really prominent things about Cornell rowing that will hit you as soon as you walk in. It'll be large enough to encompass uh, 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 huge regattas when we all when we do have a six uh, visitor regatta, which we happens every I don't know third, fourth, fifth year, something like that. Um, and you could have six visiting crews plus the parents and all. You're still going to have room to walk in and get a sense of you are in the Cornell Boathouse. This is the home of the Big Red Rowers. The tradition room will absolutely be the the wow room of the boathouse. It it'll be the room that we used to showcase the, the tradition of rowing at Cornell. Cornell, this room, this may be the actual most important of the rooms. Currently, we don't have really much tradition displayed at all. Uh, you get a little sense of something here, something there. The tradition room is a place, I hope, that becomes, uh, it becomes a place that rowers can walk into and not just feel what modern, current hit crews have done, and not just what some old crews, but a current, just a chronological view of how much we have done, who we are, where did we come from, what kind of work ethic do we have, what kind of work ethic got us to where we are, how many championships do we have, how many Olympians do we have, how many world champions do we have. Um, just the, the whole part of being a Cornell rower is, is, it's lost right now in our current boathouse. It's not there. Um, this room, I hope, would be able to do that job. Uh, allow us to get a real view of who we are, uh, what the classes before us have done, um, and what you then are expected to do as well. And I think that that's a big message that needs to be sent is that a current, to a current novice walk-in or a recruit, you know, look, look what we've done on this great body of water. People can say it's cold here, but who cares if it's cold? If you can win from there, that sends a message to people. It will, it will be a room that, that shows, that says, we, we love to win, we have won, we will continue to win. The overall strategy, it's not just a single movement. It's not a work ethic strategy. It's a culture. The Cornell rowing culture, the culture of winning, the culture of performance, the culture of work. Uh, the culture of being a student athlete uh, is important and having all of these assets together uh, in one, one location uh, under one roof 
can only help this program. Every individual who comes into this program will be touched and will see that Cornell Rowing is larger than life, larger than just one individual or one class or one boat. It's, it's larger than that. Um, the winning tradition part, I, I look and simply say, call your boathouse as it stands and Robeson boathouse as it stands are fine facilities in terms of holding some boats. Uh, they have a few ergs in them. But the actual tradition of Cornell rowing, it really doesn't show up here. There's a few pictures here and there, but there's not any spot in the boathouse that you walk in and you're just in awe of, wow, I'm in a place that since 1872 or uh, uh, the exact date that, that Ostrom and his six got five other guys came paddling down, started going from, that says this is who we are, this is how we work, this is what we've done, and this is what we expect you to do. And I think that that's a, a large message that needs to be sent because in this day and age, you know, it's, it, we're not winning and losing races by more than a couple seconds and that's less than a percent and one little percent of tradition, if it gives a, 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 a couple kids that little push, great. The, the boathouse, as I see it, it gives us the new tradition, it gives us the training room, it gives us the boat storage that we're looking for and the compliance that we're looking for in the women's case so that it's easier to recruit. We can show a recruit, hey, look at this rowing center. What don't we have here? You know, you can walk up into this tradition room uh, uh, and see where you start, where we started, and where it's how many people have one. So you can see we we can win here. You can walk upstairs into the training room. There'll be banners hanging from the ceiling of all the boats that have won an IRA or an Eastern Sprints uh, uh, or uh, some other big enough regards that we feel qualify for that and they'll be able to see whatever 70, 100 ergs, weightlifting equipment, strength and conditioning workouts on the wall and it's all there for them. It, it's, a no, it's a no brainer. To a kid that wants to work hard, it's just going to say come use me. Come to Cornell and you will have what you need to make yourself the best you can be. And that to me is, is the selling point of this thing. It's, I don't want to say you can't win out of this boathouse. You, you, you've seen a number of times we have. You know, a, a, a number of you have already won out of this boathouse. But in the arms race, it's getting bigger and better and stronger. And this just allows us a, a, a little bit more of an edge on some other people. And it gives us an, a, a chance to, to work with more people to get a better shot at getting some developed further along than it would have otherwise. Princeton still holds on to a five-seat advantage. Here they come. Princeton, four seats on Cornell. Cornell starting to go. Here comes Cornell. Cornell's leveling up with Princeton, 38 and a half. Cornell starting to go. Cornell is going to go by Princeton. 38 and a half Cornell. Navy moving on Yale. Navy only a seat down on Yale. Cornell has the lead. Cornell is out front, two seats on Princeton. Navy, Navy challenging for bronze. Navy looks like they might get by Yale. Open water back to Georgetown and open water back again to Dartmouth. The big red from Ithaca. Look like they're gonna hang on and win this race over the Tigers. Navy and Yale tied for third. Quite exciting. The big red just held back and then popped it with 500 to go, 400 meters to go, and they are your national champion.